got about three minutes. You got extra time. Now listen, here's the deal. All right, remember the prayer. Don't forget the prayer. That's what we missed a couple of times. Check, check. You know, the mic is so far away. I've still got 16 tails. Yeah, I've got uh, 2 Check, check, check. You know, Matt, it's a little weird having that mic that far away. I feel, I, I feel like I need to lean in. No? I don't need to lean in? No? It's still loud? It's hot? Debbie, can you hear me in the back? Carolyn, Carolyn Basil. Carolyn Basil. in the back back row baptist let me hear where's where's hildebrand he's always on the back the very farthest corner we get am i loud enough because somebody told me i screamed too much last time so i'm going to try not to scream hey welcome everybody to uh to uh, uh meeting number two of the touchdown club i'm so proud of everybody for getting here i know many of you got here early some of our door rattlers got here at nine o'clock and we're here an hour yes they did there's nothing the matter with that i'm very proud of them we put that out on all social media that, uh, listen, there's no other touchdown club in America that has members getting here an hour before the door, uh, door opens. So uh, we're very blessed with that. Well, listen, we're going to have a great time today. I've heard rave reviews that Ryan Mallett was on the buzz today with Justin and Wes and did a fantastic job. Let me tell you what, Ryan Mallett brought his A game in his dress wear. How about that? Give it up for Ryan Mallett. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. You know, John Daly gave me this coat uh, at his tournament. I, now I feel really underdressed next to Ryan today. So uh, Ryan also has a very special person in the crowd that they will introduce a little bit later. His fiance is here today. So she has never been at, yeah, let's give it up for Tiffany. We'll introduce her in just a second. Uh, Ryan says that she has not been at one of his events where he's had a chance to speak. And so we're going to have some fun today. Uh, because football season starts this week. Is it not exciting? Oh, my gosh, it's finally here for here in Arkansas and around the country. That's exactly right. Uh, without further ado, though, we all, always get things started. You know, last week I did mention, uh, it was great, Gary, that you mentioned Wendy Anderson and uh, Blake, and that's why I want to remind you. Let's, let's everybody just take a minute and say something on that card. Praying for you, thinking about you, you know, love you, and you appreciate what Wendy stood for, all those kind of things. And we'll put those together over the next couple of weeks and send that to him. That's, that's the best thing that we can do, and we can, we'll welcome him back to the Touchdown Club in a few weeks. But, Gary, will you come up and listen to the word of prayer? Yeah, David's making fun of my fellow Baptist. We like to sit at the back of church in the front of the football game. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's why I've got seats on the second row at Razorback Stadium. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the beautiful day that you've given us, the opportunity to gather back together and renew friendships, make new friends. Lord, we just thank you so much for the, that and all the other blessings that you give us. Thank you for the food and use it today to give us strength as we serve you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate that. Where's uh, Deputy Sheriff uh, 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 Michael Dar? Where's Michael at? So, so Michael's in the back right there. He was at the first meeting. 
So, Michael, you saw him already helping folks get in today. His most key objective is helping you get out today. So he's going to be uh, there at the light, holding that light, getting you out of here. Maria at the, at the toll booth. You say, Maria, thank you. Here's my tickets. And, uh, and uh, we'll bring up Debbie in just a second to tell you what you need to do. But I want you to turn around and look at Michael Darwin. Let's give him a round of applause. Michael, you're going to be our MVP. <laughs> Michael has never worked a job where he had 400 people looking at him saying, we're depending on you, Michael. <laughs> it's all you. All you. So, but thank you. And uh, also to... to uh, Deputy Sheriff McKay as well. I uh, want to remind everybody, mute your phones. If folks can't be here, if you want them to hear Ryan a little bit later, they can go to, uh, they can watch online at lrtouchdown.com, Facebook, or they can hear Ryan on 103.7 The Buzz. If you'll mute your phone, besides that, that would be great. A great cookout, kickoff meeting last week. We didn't have Rex last weekend, but had about 650 people, I think, uh, down at the State House. But this is going to be our home for the next year, every Monday. And so, except for Labor Day next week. Um, but anyway, it was a great way to kick off things. We're already, I think, between 350 and 400 members, and we really need to hit 400 members. For us to be able to get the kind of folks that you want to have in to speak, we need like 400 members. It doesn't matter if you're one of our great 50-yard line members or you're paying 75 bucks for the year. It all goes in together with our great sponsor, so we need you. So Chad Morris last week, Ryan Mallett today, Mark Rick next Tuesday, Bobby Petrino, September 9th. So the next four weeks are going to be very interesting. If you want to increase your membership to uh, buy the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame or National Football Foundation, we encourage you to do that. Do you want to thank Gabe Holstrom, Downtown Partnership? We're proud to be downtown. We're sort of learning our way around a little bit. It's a little foreign territory a little bit, but we're learning our way. Did you see the, the hotel signs in the, in the lobby? They're trying to do everything they can to help us out because they're glad to have us down here. And I want to thank Jeff McClure, Beth Clark, and Brent Bailey for that. Um, I think from there, let's thank our sponsors real quick. So I'm going to make a commitment to all y'all right now. I'm going to make a commitment. <laughs> so somebody today, I'm going to tell you what, this is the kind of stuff I get. You know that they, somebody said, that David Basil sure does look happy in life. True story. He just sure, look, sure does look happy in life. Maybe that's because there's a relationship and house that he's doing and all this. Medical marijuana, whatever it is. <laughs> not, not that. Not that. They go, because you can tell that he's just completely let himself go to pot. <laughs> Said, uh, don't work, you can tell it doesn't work out anymore. He looks horrible. And uh, so I'm going to tell you right now, by the end, mark, mark the tape. By the end of this football season, I will be 25 pounds lighter. <laughs> done. 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 It's on tape. 25 pounds lighter by the time Bill Curry rolls into this touchdown club. It's on tape. And I'm going to find that. Yes, Ron? You too, right here. <laughs> And I'm going, to find, I'm going to find the person who said that. I'm going to go, you know, you were right. Thank you for giving me the motivation I need. I do want to thank our great with our Cliff Harris promotion. 1037 The Buzz, great to have. I can look at right out the door here and see uh, Justin and, and Wes. And uh, great to have uh, my buddies uh, Roger, uh, Scott, and uh, Tommy Smith back here. They weren't there last week. And glad to have you guys back support me along with RJ. Couldn't do it without The Buzz. Glad to have them uh, every week going live. Arkansas Urology, Scott Davis, Tim Lankford. Arkansas's largest urology practice. So here's the thing, guys. September 10th, yeah, free prostate screening. Please take advantage of that. Please take advantage of that. And that's the Little Rock location, Arkansas Urology, September 10th, uh, free prostate screening. We encourage you to get that. Can't beat free. A War Memorial Stadium. We've got two games tonight, two games tomorrow night. Do you want to thank Justin Dorsey, the director, and John Latch, assistant manager? You got the Buzz Kickoff Classic tonight and tomorrow night. You got Salt Bowl August 30th, Friday, expecting 30,000. And of course, uh, Arkansas versus Missouri kind of at the end of the year, and, of course, state championships as well. So glad to have War Memorial as a sponsor. Uh, Farm Bureau, Pulaski County, Todd Dennis, Stephen Reichert, great products, great customer service, auto, homeowners, boat, health, you name it, they've got it. Give these folks a chance to quote you on, their, uh, on any kind of insurance needs you have. They're great people. Dairy Queen, Blake Nelson, Nelson Lyle, Todd Denton, largest DQ franchise in the state. New one coming to Greenbrier. I imagine it's a pretty big deal when, when Greenbrier gets a DQ, is what I'm just thinking. I have a funny feeling. Uh, Verizon Arena, Jeremy Flynn tells me that, you know, we made the announcement last week to have some suites available. Already sold a suite. So I don't know how many they have left, but if you want to find out the coolest thing to do in watching uh, a, a, any kind of event, the 40 events they have, is do it in a suite. So talk to Jeremy Flynn about maybe getting one of those suites 
uh, if you're a corporate client or an individual. So that's available. See Jeremy Flynn over at Verizon uh, Arena. Uh, Big Red stores will be, actually the buzz will be at Big Red promoting uh, uh, the Salt Bowl this week over in Saline County. I do want to thank the Hendricks family. 40 locations. We love them. They're a great family business. And um, did you hear, by the way, too, if you don't mind me saying it, we threw out the, the 10 cents. Uh, remember last week if the Razorbacks win, you get 10 cents off? Um, the U of A didn't like that very much, so I think that's going to be readjusted. They're going to work on that a little bit and see how that works out. Right, Todd? So, uh, but uh, I, lo <laughs> I love the fact that Big Red is, is supporting the U of A and supporting the Razorbacks. They're good people. Uh, thank you to the Hendricks family. All right, Lindsay and Jennings, uh, 120 years as a law firm, 70 attorneys, one of the best firms in the South. Uh, please take advantage of them if you have any legal needs. You, know, you guys know the story with me and them. Uh, they saved my life the last three years. And I do want to thank them for being a founding sponsor of the Cliff Harris Award. By the way, the Cliff Harris Trophy, as you see, we don't have it. It's going to OBU. It's going to have a permanent home in the stadium, in the stadium where people walk in and they see the Cliff Harris Stadium. Uh, the the, the uh, trophy right there in the stadium. Yes, I think that's worth a round of applause. So thank you to Wright, Lindsay, and Jennings. Uh, Crane Automotive, Larry Crane. Uh, where is Larry? Two weeks in a row Larry is here. And the guys, I appreciate Larry and bringing the guys. And uh, it's the largest dealership uh, group in Arkansas, 19 dealerships. He employs 800 Arkansans. And that's a big deal, Larry. And we appreciate you and your great story of your business success over the years. Crane team's got them. They live here, play here, and work here. Uh, and also mention, I'll go ahead and do this now. So what Larry has decided to do, he got into the, he saw what uh, Dairy Queen did last week. Uh, giving away stuff. He saw what uh, Big Red did and giving away stuff. He goes, wait a minute, I want to give away stuff. So Larry Crane, every home game for Fayetteville is going to draw, we're going to do a drawing for two people to sit in his Crane Automotive Suite in Fayetteville for the Razorback game. And I asked uh, Debbie to do the drawing instead of putting it under your seats because what was going to happen, people would come in Rex and they'd go, look under, not going to sit there, going to sit to the one that has it. <laughs> So uh, the winners for this week's game uh, against Portland State that will sit in the Crane Automotive Box, Elizabeth and Charles Cloxton. Let's give it up for them. Very, Elizabeth and Charles Cloxton. So listen, just behave now when you go in that box. But thank you, Crane Automotive Larry, for, uh, for doing that. Uh, also, of course, uh, Democrat Gazette, Wally Hall and Amanda Copley. Uh, uh, I know Am Amanda and Wally next, start next week. We, uh, is it next week or two weeks we start our All Arkansas Preps Player of the Week? I think it will be after this week. So appreciate Wally's support and Amanda's support of the Touchdown Club. Thank you. You guys have been with us since day one. Simmons Bank today, we have Freddie Black and Pat Anderson, two good guys at Simmons. I told, I told, uh, I told Ryan, now listen, Ryan, you're still a young man. I said, you got to develop those banking relationships, and those two guys right there you need to start talking to today. So uh, thank you guys for being such a great sponsor. We couldn't do it without Simmons Bank, and uh, tell George and Chris we missed them, but two good guys right there that in their place today. So let's give a big round of applause to Simmons Bank and all of our great sponsors. You want to thank Matt Johnson, who's handling our AV work, does a great job, Matt Johnson Productions, Dwayne Duncan, Nobody Takes Pictures Better. And then Dwayne back there. R.J. Hawk is not here today handling our social media, but we have so great. We have, listen, our staff is so, our volunteer staff is so big. When people aren't here, people jump in. Uh, Meredith Hale, who works at CareLink, where's Meredith right there? She's jumped in. She's, she's the point. We tweet out all this stuff, you know, something sort of behind the scenes. We tweet out stuff that's going on before we even come in the door. Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. And so thank you, Meredith, over at CareLink, that uh, her boss lets her come over here and, and do this every week, along with Samantha Montgomery from the AG's office. We appreciate her. Grant Garrett. Uh, Grant's going to go out and monitor. We needed some muscle out there at the light after the, uh, the meeting's over. So you're going to see Grant out there with, with Shep, uh, the deputy sheriff, and Grant's going to be like this, just to make sure everything's going well. So I do thank uh, Grant for, uh, for being here. And last but not least, how cool is it to walk in and see all those amazing ladies that are checking everybody in. They get here an hour early, don't get paid anything. And our guys that come in here, the three amigos I call them, that come in here and set up all these little stanchions, we couldn't do that without them. So let's give them a big round of applause. All of our Touchdown Club volunteers. And Debbie, I know this, because this is the first time we, listen, this is the first time we've done this in 15 years. We've been at different locations. So, uh, so our executive director, she does a great job. All of you know her by name and face. Let's welcome Debbie Wyman, everybody. Come on up, Debbie. Okay, 
Okay, I don't want to take too much time, but just a few housekeeping things. We are in a new place. We were in a new place last week. So thank you all for your patience. It's been a little bit trying to, to kind of get things together. We have new computers, as you've all noticed. That's been a new experience for all of us and all of our check-in people. And Al will remind you that everybody is a volunteer. So um, they're, they're all trying to learn and do the best they can. Few things. So badges. You. Those of you who are 50-yard line members and sponsors have received a lanyard with a badge on it. Please take those with you. Keep up with them. If you're not someone that comes every week with your sponsor, give those back to whoever is the coordinator for your group so that they can pass them out for the people who are coming the following week. Okay? Um, everybody does need to check in. Now that we're at the double tree, we've kind of felt our way around this morning. Fire Marshal, we cannot block the elevator with lines. We cannot block the stairway with lines. So that's why I had to back everybody up. So we will not be have our nose to the front door, those of you who get here early and are waiting, and I'm so glad you do. However, there is a little glitch. There's no place else to put the check-in tables. So if people are checking in at the same time that the doors open, we're going to ask those people who are checking in to wait until the end of the line because that's where they would have been originally. That didn't happen this morning, so we're, we're gonna, as I said, we're working out some glitches. Um, food, the food looked lovely today. Anybody, what did everybody think about the food today? Okay. Um, Double Tree is doing a wonderful job. Their chef's working with us on some um, choices every week, so hopefully uh, you all, all enjoyed the lunch today. Parking. If you parked in the deck and you got a pass when you parked, when you pulled in, you have to have another pass to go along with that to get out and not pay. So if you didn't get one, we'll have some folks outside today that you can grab one on your way out to the parking deck. You will give the parking attendant both tickets. Now, I think there'll be a little bit of leeway. Initially, they were taking your tickets when you checked in today. So don't worry about it, they're not gonna keep you in the parking deck, but in the future we'll have two parking decks per person, per car, going out, okay? Um, please, RSVP. Every week you get emails, let us know if you're coming, either purchase your tickets online or make a reservation. We use that every Friday for the head count for the hotel. Um, I know you get multiple emails, the emails just are scheduled to go out. You may have already RSVP'd, so just disregard it if you have, but if you haven't, I do need to know who's coming by Friday at noon. Okay, hopefully we'll have a good season and we'll keep working things out as they happen. Awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. And just so you know, we're not like the, the Rotary Club who we, 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 we teamed up with last week. If you RSVP and you don't show up, we eat that meal. We, we eat the cost. So just so you know, if you've got friends that go, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to RSVP, there's three or four of you go, we're not going to show up. So that's going to cost us over $100 because we, we have to guarantee that. So, but we have yet to say you have to pay if you RSVP. We haven't done that yet. So those of you RSVP, just realize that if you do that, we, we guarantee the hotel that we're going to pay for that. So, but listen, I love to see you guys here. I'm so proud of everybody, Rex. It's been outstanding. Uh, and we didn't have Rex last week. We don't have a weekend recap. But we do have a, just a short uh, weekend preview because football has, has arrived Nobody does it better than Rex Nelson. Welcome in now, everybody. Rex Nelson. Thanks, David. Well, it is football season, thank goodness. Larry Crane, I love you, but I, I tell you, David got my hopes up. I thought he was going to break into Oprah and say, everybody gets a car. <laughs> but he said you had a big surprise. I thought this is going to be the greatest touchdown club meeting ever. But thank you anyway. All right, we're off and running, though I've got to tell you, I'm not too keen on this idea of a zero week, but Florida does survive against Miami, 24 to 20 in Orlando. The Gators win for just the second time in their last nine meetings against the Hurricanes. Both teams, if you watched it, really struggled with penalties and turnovers. Florida's quarterback looked very inconsistent to me. In the words of Dan Mullen, the last five minutes of the game, I aged 10 years. So we do have one SEC team with games in the books. Now, David mentioned, and this is a great week to support high school football. Our high school football gets better and better in Arkansas every year. And as you know, we honor a player every week. We honor coaches and players at the end of the year. We're all about high school football in addition to college. So 
games tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday night at War Memorial Stadium. You've got Little Rock McClellan, which has been a power in recent years, versus Dollarway tonight at 5. Desarc, my mama's alma mater, versus England at 7.30 tonight. And then tomorrow, you've got Little Rock Central versus West Memphis. That should be a fun game at 5 o'clock. And you've got another traditional power, the Nashville Scrappers, playing Watson Chapel at 7.30. And then the Salt Bowl on Friday night, as David said, Big crowd there. They're expecting thirty to forty thousand dollars, and Shane Broadway has promised me there will not be a stampede this year. So you are you are encouraged to be there. So games tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday night at War Memorial Stadium. Get out and see those. Now SEC. Everybody else gets into the action after Florida last week. Everybody else this week. My wife's alma mater, Texas State, at Texas A&M on Thursday night. You get to watch the Aggies and see what they look like. And then on Saturday, you've got Duke versus Alabama in Atlanta. You've got Auburn versus Oregon at Jerry World in Arlington. And those are both on ABC. In fact, ABC starts with Ole Miss at Memphis at 11 o'clock. So you can keep it on Channel 7 and see three of the six Western Division opponents all on Saturday. So Duke versus Alabama and Atlanta, Auburn versus Oregon and Arlington. We have a conference game Saturday night, Georgia at Vanderbilt. Then you've got Toledo at Kentucky, Georgia Southern at LSU. I mentioned Ole Miss at Memphis. Louisiana Lafayette plays Mississippi State in New Orleans. A lot of drunk bulldogs and Cajuns looking on for that one. Missouri is at Wyoming. Why they're going to Wyoming, I don't know. But South Carolina plays North Carolina in the Battle of the Carolinas at Charlotte. Georgia State is at Tennessee. And, of course, Portland State at Arkansas Saturday afternoon at Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Other game in the state Saturday night, SMU comes to Jonesboro. Big game there to play Arkansas State. So Portland State at Arkansas, SMU at ASU. UCA opens on Thursday night at Western Kentucky. UAPB opens in Fort Worth at TCU on Saturday night. The Great American Conference teams don't start play until the following Thursday, so we'll cover that next Monday. So again, high school games tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday night at War Memorial Stadium, and then college games on Saturday in Fayetteville and Jonesboro. No excuses. Get out and see some high school and college football this week. The season has arrived. Thanks, everybody. So, Rex, uh, you've done your uh, score recap show for 20 years, yes. right? Yes, uh-huh. You've been the voice of OBU for how many this years? the 37th. 37th year. How about that? Is that not outstanding? You've watched. Yeah, that's worth a round of applause. Give it up for Rex Nuss, everybody. All right, before we gym up, uh, bring up Jim Rasco to introduce uh, Ryan today, I wanted to, make, to mention a couple of things. I saw some shirts. I am so proud to see some of you folks wearing your uh, Little Rock Touchdown Club shirts from last year. There are some out there that haven't been picked up from last year. And do want to thank uh, Cassie Caldwell and Steve Jenkins from uh, uh, Hogman's Game Do Superstore for last year. We're going to do that again this year. We're just going to do it for two weeks. Not going to put your name on there. If you want to do that, you can do it yourself. Uh, but we'll put the Little Rock Touchdown Club on there. But we'll announce that in the next couple of weeks. But I do want to say well done for you that are wearing your shirts. You look very uh, impressive. Do want to mention a couple special guests here today. Uh, always great to have. We. I have the trophy up here because we feel like uh, even though we don't actually present the Brules Award that we're a part of that. And, of course, you know I started that back in 1996. Great to have the daughter and granddaughter of Frank Brules, uh, Betsy and Molly Arnold. Please welcome them there. Where are you guys at? They right. Stand up. Let everybody see you guys back there. What's, what's the date of the Brules Award this year? December 10th. December 10th. And so uh, don't be surprised. I'm going to make a call right now. If Oklahoma... Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you see Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma. He's going to make that big of a difference, I think, at Oklahoma. We'll see. He might be here in Little Rock at the end of the year. Also wanted to mention, too, I mentioned Larry Crane a minute ago. He's got a special guest, Terry Parrott. And Terry is a teacher uh, or has been a teacher for many, many years. And uh, her, uh, Ryan Mallett's grandfather, uh, right, Terry, actually hired you wow. to work in the Searcy School District. And you know the, 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 the Mallet family, so I didn't have to. Please welcome Terry Parrott, who is, uh, yes, that small connection, interesting connection with the, uh, the Mallet family. Great to have you here, Terry. 
Uh, without further ado, what we're going to do with, with Ryan is we're going to have Jim Rascal come up and uh, introduce Ryan, and we're going to set up Q&A. We're going to show some video, a little bit of video of Ryan as well. We're going to have some fun here. And uh, nobody does it better. I told uh, Ryan, no telling what Jim Rascal is going to bring up about your youth, youth football antics, but he will have it. Let, let, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Rascal, everybody. Okay, our speaker was born in 1988, my mother's hometown of Batesville, Arkansas. His dad, Jim, was a football coach, and his mom, Debbie, was a teacher. I first found Ryan in the newspapers in September of 2003, playing quarterback as a ninth grader for Texas High in Texarkana, Texas. By December, this 15-year-old was quarterbacking his team in the playoffs in Texas Stadium in Irving. After passing for 2,307 yards as a sophomore in 2004, Ryan was heavily recruited by the Texas Longhorns in the fall of 2005. I found a quote in the Austin, Texas paper when Ryan was on the sidelines as a guest of the Longhorns. Mallet said, I never really was a Longhorns fan. I grew up rooting for Arkansas. <laughs> Shortly after his junior season in high school, Ryan committed to play for Lloyd Carr in the Michigan Wolverines. During his senior season, he passed for 3,353 yards and 33 touchdowns with only three interceptions. He was a Parade All-American, Gatorade Player of the Year for the state of Texas, and won the Glenn Davis Award as the Outstanding Player in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl following his senior year. He graduated semester and enrolled at Michigan in January of 2007. Now, he did return to Texarkana for his senior prom. I read that his favorite high school teacher, Mrs. Susan Waldrop, looked at Ryan standing six foot seven in a white tux and proclaimed that he looked like Shamu, the great killer whale. <laughs> That's what it said. Okay, I've got time to only talk about two games at Michigan. The Wolverines lost their first two games of the 2007 season. Their starting quarterback was injured. The third game of the year was against Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame had a hotshot freshman quarterback named Jimmy Clausen, who when he committed to Notre Dame, he had proclaimed that he would lead the Irish to four straight national championships. Now, in front of over 111,000 fans in the big house, the two freshman quarterbacks faced off. It was Mallet to Matthews, 26-yard touchdown. Mallet to Arrington, 5-yard touchdown. Mallet to Manningham, 13-yard touchdown. The final score was determined by the end of the third quarter. Michigan, 35, Notre Dame, zero. The next week, unbeaten Penn State came to the big house. In the first quarter, Mallet made a great fake and ran 10 yards for the first score of the game. I remember the picture in the paper. He's holding the ball out as he crosses the goal line. He later passed for 170 yards, and Michigan won 14-9. Okay, now to stay within my time limit, I've got to cover Arkansas and the NFL pretty quickly. The good news is that all of you in this room know as much about Ryan's two seasons at Arkansas and his NFL career as I do. At the end of the 2007 season, head coach Lloyd Carr and quarterback coach Scott Leffler are out at Michigan, and Rich Rodriguez is in with his spread read option offense. This offense does not fit Mallet's skills as a drop-back pocket quarterback. The reverse is true at Arkansas. Nutt is out and quarterback guru Bobby Petrino is in. So Miley's on his way home from Ann Arbor. He stops at Fayetteville and Jim and Debbie get a call from their son. Ryan says, Dad, I'm looking at the most beautiful sight in the world, Razorback Stadium. Jim Mallet is quoted as saying, Ryan always wanted to go to Arkansas. In Ryan's first SEC game against Georgia, he becomes the first Razorback to pass for over 400 yards in one game as he passes for 409 yards, five touchdowns with no interceptions. During the year, he set or tied 16 Razorback school records, led the team in passing with 3,624 yards, was named first team all SEC by ESPN.com, then following the regular season, he was named MVP of the Liberty Bowl, leading the Razorbacks to their first bowl win since 2003. In closing, I'd like to talk about one game that many of you in this room attended at War Memorial Stadium on Saturday afternoon, November 27, 2010. It's the last game of the regular season. Arkansas is hosting LSU. The game is, in reality, a playoff game because the winner will be the host of the BCS Sugar Bowl game. My four tickets to War Memorial Stadium 
games are right behind the seats occupied by the players' parents. So for that game, Jim and Debbie Mallett and Ryan's grandmother, Ms. Burnett, occupy the three seats directly in front of my family. Midway through the second quarter, Mallett hits Kobe Hamilton for an 85-yard touchdown, and Ryan sets Ryan's school record of 58th career touchdown pass. LSU comes back to tie the game at 14 to 14, and with six seconds left before the half, LSU punts the ball over the goal, so we get the ball on the 20. I wisely turn to my nine-year-old grandson and say, we'll take a knee. He says, oh no, Matt will throw a long pass. <laughs> my grandson's correct. Ryan hits Kobe Hamilton again for an 80-yard touchdown, and Debbie Mallett turns back to me and smiles and says, you see why we don't take a knee? <laughs> And I said, yes, and that's why Petrino's the coach and your son's the quarterback and I'm sitting up here in the stands. And my grandson knows more about football than I do. In the fourth quarter with Arkansas leading 21 to 20, Mallett hits Joe Adams on a fourth and three for a 39-yard touchdown and Arkansas holds on to win 31 to 23 and win the right to play in their first and only BCS Bowl game. Well, that's the five minute David allows me, so here we go. The man you came to hear, Razorback number 15, Ryan Mallett. Check, check, check. All right. Good job, Jim. Appreciate that. Man, your, your socks are even, uh, look, at the, look at those socks, man. And the question, did Tiffany dress you or did you dress yourself? I'll say she did. She did, okay. Is it, yeah, I think, can we hear it back there in the back? We good? Check, check one more time. Can you hear me? All right, cool. Need more juice? All right, before we get, get, get started, a uh, couple things. Uh, I just got a text. It looks like, uh, you know, last week we had Chad Morse. He didn't know who his starting quarterback was going to be. At least he didn't want to announce it, but it's been official, and it's going to be Ben Hicks. Just announced. Are you surprised? Raise your hand if you're surprised it wasn't Starkle. Yeah. So how many of you think that probably there's a good chance that we'll see? Oh, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that in just a second. How many expect Starkle to be the court announced quarterback? Yeah. So I think obviously we'll see every quarterback play this, this weekend. Uh, uh, but that's why we, we want to have you here on this day, Ryan. So without further ado, I think we need to introduce somebody uh, very important in your life. Uh, you proposed this young lady, what, about a month ago? About a month ago, yeah. Uh, and she is from Lead Hill, Arkansas. Lead Hill, Arkansas. Tiffany Seeley. Tiffany, will you please stand and let's get, welcome her officially to the Touchdown Club. <laughs> Tiffany Seeley. <laughs> So, what's the population of uh, Lead Hill? It's like 292, I think. <laughs> what did you graduate with, 23 people, babe? Yeah. So, people. so uh, why, why is she the, the person for you? She's my person, man. It's, you know, when you know, you know. It when took you know. me 31 years, but <laughs> I, fi I finally found her. Awesome. Have you set a date yet? June 5th next year, on my birthday, actually. All right. Yeah. Now, listen, that'll help you always remember that, That's right? Exactly you do right. Yeah, very good. That's exactly right. I've been thinking about that for a while. So, hey, I thought it might be fun before we pitch back to Justin and Wes so they can, you know, lock into the bus, is that what, uh, what uh, Jim was talking about there, you can, you, you sort of remember that, but I thought it would be a good idea. I asked Tony Rankino over at Channel 7 to put together about a 90-second uh, reel of Ryan Mallett and that high-powered Bobby Petrino offense. So, Matt, if we could, let's roll tape and just remember um, – how, just how good Ryan Mallett was.
Just a little taste of Ryan Mallett. Let's give it up for that uh, outstanding young man. Seems like a long time ago. It, it does, but I tell you, I tell you what. Uh, again, I just think those last couple of years, two, three years of Bobby Petrino, how explosive you guys were offensively, the points that you saw. Um, we'll get to some more of that in just a second. First of all, so tell us what you're up to. I'd heard that you were, um, you know, last year you were up at Chad Moore sort of helping out. Couldn't be officially a coach. Right. Um, but that you also, too, now that you're maybe looking at possibility of XFL. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm excited. I'm about to get ready to go to, the, to play in the XFL. The draft's in October, uh, so I don't really know where I'm going or any of that, but I'm excited. I'm ready to get back on the field. It's still, been too long. Still feel like you got it? You can handle it? Yeah. Oh, I got plenty left. Got pl <laughs> yeah, I got plenty left. I still got about 10, 15 years left. Okay, so. that's all right. So, so XFL is a little bit different than NFL, and it's you know, wide open, crazy. And, but, but, again, you still have the, the fire burning inside you. Oh, no question. Uh, I mean, just watching that, I mean, in that introduction, wow. I, thank you. It kind of had me choking up a little bit over here. But it, uh, it's, it's, I'm ready to go. So think about this. So Texarkana High School. So you had a chance. You know, Arkansas, you certainly could have gone to Arkansas. You were, for those that don't know, again, Ryan Mallett was the number two quarterback in America, the number four overall recruit in America. And so you made the decision to go to Michigan. Talk about that in relation to, to Arkansas and why, that, why you chose Ar uh, Michigan. Well, I, I went to a camp up there. I got invited by the offensive coordinator, went to a camp up there, and I really fell in love with it. Ann Arbor, Michigan is a great place. The University of Michigan, I mean, it speaks for itself. Great education you can get there. Um, did I always want to go to Arkansas? For sure. At the time when I was coming out of high school, there was a little crazy stuff on the hill going on, and some guy named Mitch was up there, and his, his high school coach was offensive coordinator. I really didn't want to get mixed in with that, so... Uh, so I decided to go a little bit north. You go up to Michigan, and uh, you're, Chad Henney is the, is the quarterback there. So all of a sudden, he gets hurt. And uh, you go in there, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you're starting, as, as uh, Jim referred to. You beat Michigan. I mean, you beat Notre Dame, beat Penn State. You end up being 3 No Matter of fact, I think the only undefeated freshman quarterback in the history of Michigan, even though it's only three games that you were 3-0, and you also have the longest pass in the history of Michigan football, 97 yarders, and, and Mario that was too. Manningham. Mario Manningham. Yep, so at Wisconsin. So Henny comes back, and, and you know he gets back there, and he, you know you guys are you, you sort of feel like, hey, I think I can compete with this guy. And also, next thing you know, Lloyd Carr is out. Rich Rodriguez comes in, and you remember Rich Rodriguez? It was more of a spread offense. So I admit it, when you heard that, what did you think? I, I got to get my paper signed to, to get out of here. I mean, I mean, if, if you've ever seen me play, I do not run fast. So, so the zone read is is not my cup of tea. So, uh, it kind of gave me a, a good excuse, if you would, to say that to come back home and, and to play for the Hawks. Now, at that point, uh, Matt, if you can uh, punch up, I'm going to put a, a few pictures up on the uh, on the screen. So, so this gentleman, all of a sudden, you got a phone call from Bobby Petrino, or I don't know, maybe you called him. So tell me how that sort of went down in the recruitment to get you to Arkansas for Michigan. It wasn't hard. Uh, it wasn't really hard. I actually, uh, Bobby Allen's been at the University of Arkansas for a long time, and he's the, he's the uh, I don't even know what his title is now, but he's still there. And I had been in contact with him and called him and said, hey, I'm, I'm driving back from Michigan. Can I come meet the new coach? Sure. So I, I did. And uh, it took about all of five minutes before I was like, this is where I need to be. Uh, I, liked, uh, I liked his offense. He's, he, he was going to allow me to be able to change plays and do that kind of stuff. And, it, and it, it got me really excited. Plus, it was coming back home. I mean, I've always wanted to be on the hill. So. Even though, by the way, too, we didn't mention, but uh, Texarkana High, you were Texarkana High, Texas, Texas, yep, Texas, not Arkansas. So Bobby Petrino comes in, you, uh, you have to sit out that year. Yep. So watching that that one year, so were your thoughts were like, man, I, I can make this thing work? I always felt like that. When I, when I step on the field, I feel like I can make a difference in the game. And uh, that year sitting out, it was, it was tough now, uh, not being able to play. And I still had to practice every day like, it, like I was playing in the game. That's not any fun if you don't get to play. You don't get to, to reap the benefits of your work. But uh, got through that year, and then after that, you know, we, we started to make some noise. 2009, uh, you become the starter. Bobby Petrino, of course, the coach. And uh, uh, talk about some just weapons. Let's, uh, the first guy I want to throw a picture. Tell me what you think of when you see, uh, when you see this guy. Next up, uh, like, DJ Williams. I think, is, is he not everybody's favorite Razorback of all time? I think, I think he's probably mine. So... I mean, when he runs for governor, I'll vote for him. Number one yeah. tied in in the country. Yeah, Talk about Mackie, what? Mackie, award winner, uh, dependable, 
always where he's supposed to be, when he's supposed to be there, and you, you got to have guys like that around you to be successful. If you didn't, if, if having the number one tight end in America wasn't enough, you also had uh, this guy right here, maybe one of the most electric guys, Joe Adams. Talk about Joe and what he meant to you. Joe is just a different kind of player. I've never been around somebody that can make 11 guys on the team miss twice. <laughs> who, who, who breaks 22 tackles on a punt return and scores? I mean, this guy's special, and uh, I mean, hopefully that connection will be uh, back soon. Uh, let's look at this group of, of all, look at these receivers. So you have Kobe Hamilton, you have Jarius Wright, Joe Adams, and Greg Childs. I mean, that, is that not an impressive group of receivers? So talk about, talk about, you know, you're six foot six. They say you can throw the ball, you know, a mile, and also you got these four guys. Talk about, you sort of knew. Did you have a feeling to say, hey, listen, this is going to be special? Uh, those guys made me look really good. There's sometimes I probably didn't help them out by throwing a bad ball, and they'd make me look good and, and, and make a play. But I don't know if there's a, a better group of wide receivers that have ever been assembled, like, on one team in the country. And that's how I felt about them and still do. I still, I mean, I'd take them to war with me right now. So let's talk about uh, the, sort of the good and the bad. First, start, start with uh, your favorite, one of your favorite games. Uh, and so Jim referenced this. Uh, remember when the Friday after Thanksgiving used to be really special at War Memorial Stadium, and uh, you'd bring, you'd get those stinking LSU Tigers roll in. And I, I think they might have been top five or top ten. And, and number five. I think. Five, I think yeah. you're right. And as Jim said, you know, it was really for a chance to play in the BCS uh, bowl game. And so Jim referenced this play. I thought it would be fun to take a look. This is the CBS call with six seconds left in the half. This is Bobby Petrino. Uh, and he decided that uh, maybe it wasn't a good idea just to, to take a knee, but he decided to let his uh, play caller uncork it to, uh, to Kobe Hamilton. Matt? Either way, you're going to see Ryan a little bit louder. take a knee, I'm sure, here. He was wrong. I, I said 100% sure there was going to be a block on that last play, too. And I, I could I mean, look at this. They're going to let Ryan Mount, he's going to take a shotgun snap. They're going to put one up. Allen in the pocket. Throws it up over the top. Ryan the button. Watch out. It's a breakaway. Kobe Hamilton. Ten, five. Can you believe it? <laughs> look, look, look at the stadium. I, I, I'm telling you, the, the, look, at, look here. Look at the stadium, that's one of the loudest I have ever heard, War Memorial Stadium. There's six seconds left, you can see. Now, I wanted to ask you about this, Ryan. So, with six seconds left, when you go to the sideline, was that something you prompted, or did, you, did Coach Petrino go, hey, listen, you want to take a shot? How did that come down? I'm not going to lie to you. What the announcer said when he said, I'm pretty sure you're going to see him take a knee, when I was getting the play call, I thought the same thing. And um, we had game plan that, if that ever happened against that team, because we kind of game planned for LSU for a year uh, so, since we got beat down in Death Valley the year before that, and we really wanted to win that game. But uh, when, he, when, he, uh, when he called the play, I said, okay, let's go. And then I saw the defense, and it was a perfect defense to where I wanted to throw it to Kobe. And so we took a shot, and then Kobe Hamilton made it happen. Yeah, I think uh, many, maybe that, that play and the McFadden run against LSU is maybe two of the loudest uh, – uh, loudest, you know, points of that stadium's history. But then you came back in the fourth, I think it was fourth quarter against, was it a, was it a fourth down the Joe Adams pass? Or yeah, fourth and three. It's fourth and three, and I thought, again, what's going to happen here? Let's go to the tape, Matt, and see uh, the CBS call from this. We're excited about that one. We were excited so, about that So, same thing. One. So, fourth and three. So, you go over there. So, so did you guys discuss it with Petrino, or did you just go, We had. you should do this? No, we had this one pretty much uh, set up for the last 365 days. Uh, we, we, <laughs> since, since the Death Valley game, we game planned them basically for a year. Wow. Uh, I think, I believe they might have called a timeout right before that, and I go to the sideline. Coach Petrino goes, you think they're going to run the same defense? I was like, yeah, he's not going to change it. And I said, if it does change it, I'll just get us in a better play. Well, they come out and cover zero blitz to everybody, and Joe Adams made the honey badger oh, look, right. look kind of bad right there. So that there. was honey badger. That was honey badger, out. yeah. I, I didn't realize that was a honey badger. It so was, wow, fresh, that was the freshman honey badger. Oh, freshman yeah, at that freshman time. Freshman honey yeah. badger, yep. And so, uh, so, you, so you win that game, and, and obviously that's a, you know, a huge game. Again, you're proving that at that time. Again, some people forget. You know, again, those Petrino teams were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best teams in the nation. And so obviously you go on there, you go to Ohio State, 
didn't quite have the the ending that you wanted. Talk about that Ohio State game. Yeah, it was tough. Um, obviously, for I wanted it for for all of us. You know, as a hog fan growing up, you always want to see the hogs do really well, and uh, it was tough. But the, to give them a little bit credit, as much as I hate to, because Ohio State, uh, they 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 ran a blitz we haven't seen all year, and they they dropped right under my hot route, and I threw it right to them. I didn't see him, and. It, it is what it is, you know. But uh, but you had other chances to win that game too. You had the, the, the obviously the block plenty. Game. Yeah, the, yeah we've had, we had we, yeah. we had plenty to win that plenty of chances to win that game. Of course, uh, two. You know, one other. The only reason I bring this up because of the good with the bad. I would imagine maybe one of your most disappointing games, although it was maybe the greatest atmosphere maybe in Fayetteville ever, was the Alabama game, and they came in number one in the nation. You guys had a thirteen point lead in the second half, and if you remember. You, you had two plays in the first series. One was a completion to uh, Jarius Wright. Jarius Wright for 31. And then you come back with a wheel route to Ronnie Wingo for 43. Yeah. And that was what was shown in the highlights. And do you guys remember how loud it was? Because, again, if we thought if we were ever going to beat Petru uh, uh, Saban, this was going to be the year to do it. So what do you remember about that game and, and how that transpired? That is the only game I, f I remember playing there where after that first touchdown, the, back of my, the, the hair on the back of my neck was standing up. It was that loud. It, was, it gave me chills. It was fun. Um, like, just like the Ohio State game, we had plenty of chances to win that game. Didn't pull it off. Uh, we were disappointed. We obviously, I mean, we had a chance to win the national championship that year and probably should have. So, you know. Just sticks with you a little bit. Let's talk about uh, Coach Petrino. He's going to come here and speak here in, in three or four weeks. And uh, just talk about your relationship with him and the kind of coach he was and sort of what he did with the program, you know, not talking about obviously the mistake that yeah. happened personally for him, but just talk about what sort of he brought to the table and, uh, and, and where you guys were as a program at that time. He's probably the best offensive mind I've been around in the game. He's really good. Uh, we, had a, we had a great relationship at times, and sometimes we had butt heads in practice. I mean, it's part of it's part of – it's, it's almost like he was a, like an uncle or a dad kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I, I have nothing bad to say about him. He, he never did anything wrong by me, but he, he got us back where we were trying to go. And uh, I appreciate him for that. Yeah, you guys obviously at the time, uh, very productive offensively. You guys yeah. were, I mean, you said, I think you said every, I mean, what I think James, uh, Jim said 16 school records. I mean, you were just obliterating the school record book. And so, you know, defense maybe struggled at times, but, but he, he, he knew how to put up some points on the board. Yeah, he also put really good players around me, like those, like those receivers you saw in DJ Williams, Niall Davis, Ronnie Wingo, all those guys. I mean, I don't know uh, if we've ever had an as talented group of players on offense at the University of Arkansas. I'm going to circle back around to talk about Chad Morris and the quarterback situation this year. But real quick, uh, you're drafted by the New England Patriots. Yeah. So you get to go. Uh, Matt, put, you up, uh, put up this picture here real quick. There you are. You go to Texas Canada High School, and the next thing you know, you're playing next to – uh, what most consider the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Talk about that experience being around Tom Brady. That guy right there is a real deal. I'll tell you that um, it was a great experience being around him for four years. Uh, obviously, I'd, I want to play. I, I'm, you know, I didn't play the, I didn't choose to play football to, to be a backup or any of that, but you can't complain when you're sitting behind Tom Brady. I mean, <laughs> that would be, that'd be dumb. Uh, but what you see on the field is, is what he gives you every day at work and practice. Like, he wants to win no matter what, and it's, it's fun to watch. What's the thing that makes him what's, – what makes him a great quarterback? You, like I said, you, you've been around the game long enough. What's, what makes him different than everybody else? He's got a lot of dog in him. He's got a lot of dog in him. And uh, it don't – like, I mean, we were – I remember being in the locker room one day during training camp, and we had a little wiffle, wiffle ball in there. And he would not let me strike him out. Like, he, we wouldn't leave until he hit one. <laughs> And so it's just, that's just the kind of guy he is. What about Bill Belichick as a coach? Obviously, uh, you had Bobby Petrino, pretty, pretty intense guy. What about Bill Belichick? Yeah, um, Coach Belichick is, is amazing. Uh, obviously, he knows defense. That's his specialty. And, and like, kind of like Coach Petrino, he always puts the best players that he can get on the field. And, uh, I mean, that's how you do it. You end up finally getting a chance to go to Houston, uh, the Texans, and uh, talk about that uh, stop there. Yeah, that was a brief stop. Uh, you know, it was all right. Yeah. I don't, the organization is great. The organization was great. I did, I did want to ask you because you brought that up because I showed Tom Brady, uh, you know, you had the chance to play with another guy. Matt, if you'll hit the next slide, uh, a guy that uh, another Hall of Famer. What was J.J. Watts like to play for? He's, he's a really good player. Uh, he works just as hard as, as anybody uh, in the league, and it, it, it shows. I mean, he's, he's just dominant. He, he's football smart, which there's not a lot of guys that are like that like him. So he, he knows what to do and, and when to be where he needs to be.
uh, and you uh, obviously you end up going to Baltimore after that. And so uh, once that wrapped up, again, you're at this point in your life to where you're 31. Yep. You, you play with a guy who's now 42. Yeah. They're still playing. Yeah. At the, so you and, dominating. and dominating. And dominating. So, so that gives you, I'm sure, you know, maybe some motivation, inspiration to go, hey, I can do that too. Yeah, I had to, I had, had to make a choice. If I, if, am I going to keep playing or am I done? And I made that choice, and I've been working my butt off ever since to get back. Is the key for you to have a quarterback that, that knows what your talents are? Is it you got to have a, a Petrino or a Belichick when you go wherever the stop is, XFL, to take advantage of your arm strength and knowledge? It would be nice to play for an offensive-minded coach. Uh, that's – Hopefully we'll see. I don't know where, where it's going to lead me, but we'll see. I, I'd love to play for an offensive-minded coach that, that'll let me air it out a little bit and bring some of that Razorback magic back. Speaking of offensive-minded coach, Matt, uh, next slide. Uh, last year you had a chance to go up uh, and spend some time with Chad Moore. So what did, you, what did you learn being around what kind of guy he was, what kind of coach he was having played under Bobby Petrino? I'm excited about where our program is going under him. I really like uh, – his values that he instills in his players, and uh, we just, you know, it's it's a it's a building process. But I think he's going to be fine. But I don't think you can find a, a better man in college football. What do you think about his his offensive his, his mind as far as you compare, compared to the kind of offense that Bobby Petrino ran? Just the difference of what you saw last year. Yeah, it's totally different. The verbiage is definitely different. Um, it's, it's I couldn't play in that offense. I don't think it's just a little different. But. Uh, I'm excited about it, and, and some of these guys that we got coming in, these receivers that we got coming in, is, is, it's, it, it's exciting to, to, to see what they're doing and what they're going to be able to do this year. Let's take a look at the next slide. So these are the three quarterbacks, Ryan. You got uh, Ben Hicks, well, you got Starkle, Hicks, and John Stephen Jones. You, 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 I think you probably had a chance to see a little bit of all three of them. Talk about your sort of, you know, your evaluation of those three guys as quarterbacks. Well, they're definitely three different players. Uh, I think uh, Nick is – kind of more like me he's a bigger guy he's got a really strong arm Ben has been in this system for three years at SMU before he came here so I, he knows the offense and so he, he's good to go and then John Steven I love that kid man he's a he's a funny dude uh he's a smaller than than you know average quarterback but he can play ball you know you you had a chance to you know you saw the program you know sort of hit a low point there had a little you know not as low as it is right now and also man you you brought with coach Petrino and all the other players brought that thing up to uh a national level contender, you know, is this something that, that Chad Morris can do? It does, is is it the key? Is getting the players? What do you think is going to be the key to getting back to where you guys were those last few years because Petrino? Yeah, I think uh, he'll be fine once he gets his players in. He kind of came in with a, a, a empty cupboard basically. There wasn't a lot of talent there at the time, and and, and you know, last year was disappointing. But I think the this year and next year and the. The longer he's around where the guys know the system, I mean, that's what happened with Coach Petrino. The first year he was there, we were 5-7, and seven, and then we went 8-5. and five. It's The longer you're in the system and you start to know what's going on and know what to look for, it, the better it is. I got a chance to play for two completely different coaches. You know, I played for Lou Holtz and Ken Hatfield, two different completely personalities. And so, you know, and there seems to be, you know, Chad Moore is sort of an intense guy, but he's a different guy than Petrino. Just talk about the difference in coaching and how you as a player – you know, do you do you prefer one or the other? Does it make any difference to you, the pros and cons of both styles? To me, I just want a coach that knows what he's doing. Like, if, if I know he's full of it, well, then that's not going to be any good for anybody. But uh, as far as Coach Petrino and Coach Morris, they know what they're talking about when they, when they start talks, talking X's and O's. And uh, to me, it's exciting, especially for the Razorback Nation. And, you know, I'm ready, I'm ready to see what they put on the field this year. Uh, do you would you like to make a prediction on the uh, on the record for this uh, this nope. year's? <laughs> I don't want anybody mad at me, so I'm a. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. So I would think the goal would be you think probably would to, to get to a bowl game. Obviously, it's, obviously yeah. every year you want to get to a bowl. Um, I think they got enough talent to to do that. They just got to go make plays now. For the, for this crowd, this is a, this these folks in here love football. Uh, tell them what it's like as a player to play against the Sabins. Uh, at Alabama or to go to LSU in Death Valley or to go to Georgia where you won with the last second pass. Talk about what it's like to play in those kind of environments. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very hostile, as you can imagine. Uh, I remember in, uh, let's see, I guess it was 2009, we played at LSU. They ended up beating us, but they played Colin Baton Rouge before the game. Yeah. And I'm a big Garth Brooks guy. And so I was so excited. Like Coach McGee, he was like, hey, man, you got to calm down. <laughs> but I was ready to go, and, and the, the, the more people, the louder, I think, that, that made our team better. Like, we, we love to go into places and make them look bad. Was that the overtime game that we it lost was, in yep, LSU? Yep. Yeah, wow. That was a, and I think, I think 
uh, Joe Adams really got knocked. He got his yeah, helmet I got, a, I got Joe messed up pretty good. That game. <laughs> you did, you I, did. I had to apologize for him. So which which do now if, if from all the SEC teams that did, did you develop uh, uh, dislike? You know, back when I played, it was you know Texas. You know, <laughs> so when you played, was it Alabama? Was it LSU? Was it Ole Miss? Did you have a particular one that you? Anybody that wasn't wearing a Razorback okay, uniform. So it was that easy. You yeah, didn't, you didn't have matter. you didn't have yeah. anything. I just I just not a big LSU guy. I uh, I liked that last year in Little Rock. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, that is a little disappointing that that switched. Yeah, and of course you know you look at my Missouri's coming into this league and actually, you know we sort of blew Missouri. You know, hey, no big deal, Missouri, and they've obviously been yeah. very tough to beat, and, and they've really been good in quarterback development. Yeah, um, I think a lot of that goes. Coach McGee's there actually now at Missouri, and and he's really good. And so, uh, and the the guy they had last year was pretty good too. You know, it's funny. I I almost put a slide of Garrett McGee up, and I didn't because I didn't know if we'd have enough time. But for those of you who remember Garrett McGee. He was he was not there your first year, I think, right? I think was he there your redshirt year? Yeah, he was there. He was. Yeah, okay, he was there. so so talk about good guy, bad cop, good cop, maybe with Garrett McGee. Definitely, uh, Coach McGee was the guy that knew how to talk to Bobby and myself because sometimes that was hard. Like me and Bobby, like I love him, but we we butt ahead sometimes. It's, it's part of it's part of doing business. Uh, and so Coach McGee was always that the good cop, where you know he'd tell you what you needed to hear at that time. And so I, I appreciate him. What do I, before, before we wrap things up here real quick, so you have, all, you have a lot of fans. Of course, we have a lot of non-Razorback fans here, too, but you've got a lot of Razorback fans. Uh, talk about what's special to be a Razorback and how cool it is to come back and hear people that want to get your picture and get your autograph being a former Razorback. I just, first of all, thank you for, guys for having me. This is a blast, and I'm, I'm so proud to be here. Um, like Coach Nutt used to say, there's only one hog. There's only one Razorback. Uh, in the nation, and it's it's special when you put that put that helmet on. It's real special. What we'll do, we'll go ahead and wrap up now. But but to, I, I told him, I said, are you okay with signing, you know, one or two autographs? Because you know we had one Hall of Famer last year that didn't want to sign anything. Earl Campbell came in and said, I'll sign anything you want to. So Ryan Mallett said he would sign uh, something today. So if you've got a, a, a helmet or whatever, uh, we'll do our pictures afterwards and do that. But uh, do you not, well, you're not impressed with Ryan Mallett today? Let's give it up for Ryan Mallett, everybody, former Razorback. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Mark Rick, everybody. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you. That was fun, man. That was fun.